What are the chances? It's yet another glorious sunny day here in the Yorkshire Dales. And we're back on one of our favourite topics today. It's EV charging. We're going to answer a question we get asked a lot on the channel, and it's related to garages and outbuildings. And can you add an EV charge point to the supply that already feeds a garage? Of course, the garage or parking area is the natural choice for the location of an EV charger, and that's what this homeowner wants to do here. The garage is detached from the house, but it does have an electricity supply, but the garage was built some time ago, so possibly they weren't thinking about the future and EV cars coming along. So if you're thinking about any developments, stick around because I've got a top tip for you that you may wish to consider if you're planning any building work. So I've popped inside the garage to have a look at the electrical supply and behind us there's a small consume unit that's typical that you'd find in most garages or detached buildings. It's feeding sockets and some lights so this place could form a useful retreat if you want to escape from the relatives over those busy holiday periods. But is it enough to feed an EV charger? Well there is a few options however let's look at the distribution board itself. The first problem is there is no spare capacity to add a new circuit for an EV charger. Now that could easily be upgraded and replaced. However, the next problem and possibly the most major one we want to think about is, is there the capability in that cable to feed the garage and what is a new seven kilowatt load that you'd ideally want to add if you want the maximum capacity from an EV charger. The main consumer unit and the circuit that feeds the garage is in this cupboard here. And that gives us a clue as to how much power is available to the garage. If we look at the circuit rate for the garage, we can see it's rated at 20 amps. So that is significantly short of the 32 amps you would need if you wanted to install a seven kilowatt charger. However, there is a solution to that that we'll discuss a little bit later on. While we're looking inside there at the circuits, we'll see that the RCD that feeds the property is a type A, which is good news because it means if you had to add an additional circuit in there and there is space for it, the RCD itself is suitable for an electric vehicle charge point. However, the one at the garage end isn't because that's a type AC and that would need to be upgraded. If the cable itself isn't suitable to feed the garage and we want to run a new cable back here. However, there could be a few challenges because this space is fully decorated and we may not necessarily want to bring in a new cable and have to do some major uh, alterations to the wall. So unfortunately, the power supply feeding this garage isn't large enough to accommodate a full seven kilowatt electric vehicle charger. However, that doesn't rule out being able to fit a charger. It's just that we'd have to derate it to not exceed the power supply of 20 amps that's coming into the garage and therefore we wouldn't be able to charge the car at the full speed of a seven kilowatt charger. So let's also explore another scenario where the cable itself and the circuit breaker are rated at 32 amps to supply the garage. But we also need to think about what other appliances are using power in the garage itself. And we can see here, we can see that emergency beer fridge behind us. And we can also see what's known as the bubbler. Drop a comment below if you know what a bubbler is. But there are also maybe scenarios where you have tumble dryers and other appliances in the garage and they will obviously be using some of that power. And again, that doesn't restrict us having a full powered EV charger because depending on the brand and the make of charger you choose, there are options in some EV chargers that allow them to current share with other appliances that are in the garage. So let's think of the scenario. You're uh, charging at seven kilowatts and somebody switches the tumble dryer on or another appliance in the garage you would have a current transformer fitted to the circuit feeding the garage that would sense that something else is drawing power and automatically turn down the EV charger to a lower current draw during the time where that appliance is using power. So that's a, a neat solution. Uh, a little bit tricky, obviously, if you then also need to use the current transformer to monitor the incoming supply to the property. Uh, but don't forget there are also some of the chargers that enable us to have one or two current transformers to deal with that situation. So before we leave the garage, let's just consider one more scenario that could get us out of jail. What if the cable behind us was underrated at the circuit breaker? So in other words, the cable is thick enough to carry more current. So we may be looking for something or a six or 10 millimeter and the electrician has underrated it with a smaller sized circuit breaker. That could be 
a great situation. However, some caution about that. When the electrician originally installed this cable, they will have considered lots of other factors, including the voltage drop between the distribution board and the garage, and possibly some other thermal constraints, and the cable has been derated for a reason. So don't assume because you've got a thick cable, you can just increase the circuit breaker. So we've spoken a lot about power supplies to garage, but let's not forget that other problem we have when it comes to EV charging, the internet connection, because all chargers have to be smart. And obviously the easiest way of getting that connection is to use Wi-Fi or some other ethernet based connection so you can enable things like smart charging and smart tariffs. So if the garage is a long way from the house, we certainly know that Wi-Fi could be a problem. So if you're gonna to have to pull in another cable, it may be worth pulling in an ethernet cable as well to feed either direct to the charger itself or put a wireless access point in there. The advantage being you can also have Wi-Fi in the garden. So the solution for this installation is it's going to need a new cable pulling into the garage to feed the EV charge point. And that's a considerable amount of work because it is a detached building and there's also existing paving down there. But fear not, Ross from RS Electrics is already beavering away, digging that trench and facilitating that new cable. Also going to put an external distribution board near the meter enclosure to feed the garage itself. Which brings me to that top tip I promised at the start of the video. If you are planning to build a garage or have any other major works done on your house, think about that future. You may not believe that EVs are with us. You may be holding out with petrol and diesel for as long as possible, but at some point they are coming. And think about that cable. If you're building a garage, put in a bigger cable to facilitate a future EV charge point. Now, as we turn back to some advice we were once given by Rich Heppel, the smart home expert, the most expensive cable is the one you don't run. And that can certainly be the case if you find you're having to pull in a cable to a detached building that you could have easily incorporated during the build phase or even a simple duct to run that. On this property, the owner is also looking at upgrading to have some solar put in the garage and some battery storage, which is another great option that we'll be looking at on the channel soon. Check out our other EV charging videos. We've got everything in there, including that other installation stopper, the looped supply. I will leave a link in the description for that or in the eye above my head. And we look forward to getting your top tips on detached buildings and EV charge points in general.